Welcome back to the Advanced Thyroid Series. I'm your host, Karen Martell. And today we're going to be talking about alternative treatments when it comes to Hashimoto's and just plain old hypothyroidism. And with me today is one of my fave Instagram guys. He's got my fave Instagram TV channel, Dr. Gary E. Forsman. Dr. Forsman is the only internist on the Central Coast of California with an extensive research training during med- with extensive research training during medical school as part of the junior honors medical program. He ranked among the top in the nation on his internal medicine board exams. He has the best and most comprehensive internal medicine training to be found, including serving as a clinical professor who has trained other physicians at university at at a university medical center. In 1994, when he moved to the Central Coast to raise his family and open a private practice, he quickly became dissatisfied with the inability of established Western medical treatments to effectively treat many of his patients. Determined to help his patients, he began investigating alternative therapies and has expanded his training in many systems of healing. Middle Path Medicine was founded in 2008. His precise scientific mind combined with a holistic, integrative perspective makes him one of the most skilled at therapeutically synthesizing the finest healing modalities for each individual. So welcome, Dr. Forsman. That's a big mouthful. Wow, that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's quite the lead in. I'll have to talk to my people. <laughs> yes. You never know what people are going to find out about you. And then, then you read these bios, it's like, wow, going all the way back to junior honors medical well, program. Uh, well, you wow, can talk to your wife maybe ago. about that. Who's I will that have to, to talk to you about that. Uh, I was yeah. reading, I'm like, wow, he just yeah. looks so good on paper. <laughs> Exactly. And then you meet me and it's like, damn. Um, uh, no. Well, thank you for the lead. I, in. Know, that was you, great. I know that you can live up to that bio right. of yours. So don't have your wife change it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so you are a medical doctor who Correct. went rogue, basically, didn't you? Yeah, that's the way it's, it's looked at. It's even when you <laughs> use the term alternative, it's you know, that's where Andy Wild kind of when we use the term integrative therapy is we just got to keep getting that because it's just medicine, you know, and the that in the end, we won't we won't need any any, uh, you yeah. know, adjectives whatsoever in terms of complementary, alternative, integrative. It's just healing. It's just, you know, and, and getting people back to this root of claiming their own power, which is obviously what you're about. Um, but, you know, the healing is is comes from you. And so and we're just little guides along the way. It's like I. You know, we were joking. I've never heard of Koyo. Let's look into that. And we've never heard of all these other things. And uh, and the idea that you just go to these Western doctors who have one tiny piece of the puzzle, and that's the truth of what they are. Is there's you know, an internal medicine doctor for the most part is a prescriptionist, right? Mm-hmm. They do prescriptions. And when you come to see a Western medical doctor who has been indoctrinated into doing these prescriptions, that's what you're going to get. You're not going to hear about like 98% of healing, you know? And so, uh, yeah. and that's why we're here and why you're here. And, and, you know, anybody does medical training of any kind, by the way, should step back and go, wow, I just got this little slice of the puzzle here. And, and, you know, isn't there so much more to learn and isn't that exciting, you know? So, yeah. uh, yeah, um, I'm, I'm glad you say that because pe- a lot of people get really angry. They, they mm-hmm. say, why, don't, why doesn't my doctor know this stuff? Why am I not getting treated properly? And it's like, mm-hmm. I've had to, and I used to get angry. And now I'm like, right. but this is what they've learned. It's what they've learned. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I went to this chiropractor and he just like cracked and popped me. What the hell was up with that? You know? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> but, but that's what they do. And you'd be a little surprised if they didn't do something, you know, be kind of worried. It's like, if you won't touch me, there must be something really bad going on. You know, and if you go to a Western doctor, you're there for prescriptions, whether you think you are or not. And that's why it's great for people to just have this awareness. When I walk into a medical doctor's office, the standard ones often have, you know, six people waves, maybe even more, meaning they have 10 minutes to see you in all reality. And to get people in and out of the room, we need a symptom. We need a symptom reliever and we need you to go. <laughs> um, yeah. And that's the way it goes. And so uh, yeah. it's, you know, so, and the only system of healing built that way that fits into your insurance model, because that's yes. why people see MD still, yeah. is my insurance covers them. Yeah, yeah, well then, you know, there you go. That's been the way the system has been developed to make sure you go towards them so that you get a prescription. And then you go, oh my gosh, my prescriptionist gave me a prescription. Oh, <laughs> Sorry. That's, but that's so true. And if we could yeah. separate it in her head, 
And just know that that's what they're good for and don't expect anything more. And and people think because it's Mm -hmm. free, they want to get all of that from, they want all the functional Mm -hmm. stuff. They want all the nutrition stuff. It's like not going to happen. Not going to happen. You can not scare in, or not nobody else. <laughs> right. it, it's a functional that. medicine ph- physicians and, you know, the, the Institute of Functional Medicine, the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine there. Fortunately, there are doctors who are going back and kind of getting, when I went to get yeah. this board certified in anti-aging, um, you know, functional anti-aging and regenerative medicine, um, it was more to, it was something I was doing all along and it's good to know what other people are doing and, and get more of a standardized education without being feeling like you're being trapped by it. And so that's, you know, that's why, um, you know, it's so important for your doctor to continue to get training, which I have mm-hmm. done, you know, I was treating cancer and it's like, well, I should see really who else is doing this integrative oncology thing. Cause that's not something you dabble in, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, and you go on to other things, you should make sure you have a pretty good idea what the integrative world is doing. Um, because, you know, Western medicine is so simple because it's so algorithmic, you know, you have a high TSH, you get Synthroid, you get Synthroid until your TSH is normal. Then when the TSH is normal, if it's not, if your symptoms aren't resolved, you get an antidepressant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, and because you're obviously just complaining and, you know, we, we fixed you and, you know, why aren't you more appreciative? Um, uh, and that's kind of the training. And so, because the, the prescriptionist thing is also very much a specific form of prescription as you, you know, very well, and probably most of your clientele does, you know, the doctor's been indoctrinated. The only thing that you should be used is the Synthroid prescription or T4. Uh, they use generics these days as well. Um, and, that's the only thing to do and don't use those desiccated pork thyroids or anything else as far as that goes and so it's a very narrow even even within the prescriptions it's a narrow prescription training which is very fascinating yeah it is and so and and when you first started is that how you would treat thyroid when you first were kind of set out of at a medical school? Absolute, were you like, Here's absolutely, thyroxine? you're yeah. right. <laughs> you know, thyroxine, you know, is woman's menopause, you know, for an internal medicine, so easy, even a gynecologist can do it. Sorry, that's an internal medicine joke. Um, but, you know, but it was, a woman goes into menopause and she has a uterus, Premarin and Provera. She doesn't have a uterus, Premarin, right? And that's, there you go. Every woman gets it at the same dosage, you know? So that's pretty yeah. easy if you think about it. Not correct, everybody. <laughs> Remember, that's what I was taught to do and it, it didn't shouldn't take very long and many people ask why do you do these things I, it's i naturally observant i guess uh, yeah. you know that you saw that gosh these outcomes aren't quite what it is what is actually premarin and so you go pregnant mirror urine well that doesn't sound good um <laughs> sorry um provera why am i using a synthetic progestin and you, you start questioning this which is what science-based medicine is and once you start questioning it you know once and that's the thing for everybody to realize your Western doctor is so busy just learning to get that information, apply it to your patients. By the time you come out, it seems like a lot of the doctors have lost their inquisitive nature and right. they just want to get on with it. Right. Yeah. Anyway, and you so. though, like mm-hmm. you said, you're very science-based. It's not like right. you're, you're not, it's not quackery. But this no. is like you are a science-based doctor, period. You're looking at the science and you're just going over and beyond what most practitioners or most MDs would normally do, unfortunately. Correct. Because yeah. I, yeah, I, once you really look at healing and, you know, it goes so deep, you know, who am I? You know, what is the nature of the universe? And what is this spiritual psychophysicalness that this human being is? And, and it's it's, it's, a, that's part of everybody's own personal journey as well. So, um, mm-hmm. when I went into medical school, it was the only thing you could do. Now I, that's in fingers, obviously of the <laughs> quotation marks I meant, not those other kind of fingers. Um, the, uh, about that's, this is, I thought was the only way to get any kind of advanced degree and I was wrong, but I was just so naive, you know? And so, um, but once, once you're done with that training, you can do anything you want. Actually, uh, MD, as you know, and, and Deepak has shared with everybody, means medical deity. And so the system is set up for you. So you can actually prescribe. Any, any doctor has the ability, given the MD, to prescribe almost anything they want. And yeah. so it gives you a f- certain degree of agency authority that you don't get with DCs, chiropractors, yeah. NDs, et cetera, you know? Yes. Yeah, and we kind of rule the roost. So we actually make the rules for other people. And that's why people doubt chiropractic and doubt naturopaths and doubt whomever, as far as that goes. And that mm-hmm. was supposedly we can be the only authorities and that's a good business model. And as you know, we have 
there's a business model for things and then there's the truth of things and you know you try to make a match as much as you can yeah so now let's talk mm -hmm. like when someone comes in now to you mm -hmm. <laughs> with hypothyroidism which right how often do you say that's happening right now especially for women yeah i mean you know the um and you always wonder is it because of awareness that you see it more and more know, you know, know and that's and yeah. so because even in my 30 plus year career it gone from being something that occasionally occurred you know mm -hmm. and then the and the data kind of goes along with this so is, is it 30 percent of people and if it's 30 percent of people something's really wrong you know right and 30 and uh, 30 and 40 percent of women excuse me etc and so but that's an enormous percentage um and are we still not diagnosing subclinical hypothyroidism an additional 30 plus percent because if you oh, start 100%. measuring if you measure start re truly measuring reverse t3s and everybody as yeah. well as uh, the standard thyroid function test you might be getting close to like 80% of the population is hypothyroid. Okay. And so, yes. and, and so, yeah, so there's so many people that are being misdiagnosed because if you again see a standard Western doctor, you get a TSH and if you're lucky, you get a T4. And so, yeah. and that misses the vast majority of hypothyroidism that might, I was taught that it was, and remember before the 1960s, I believe it was that the TSH came out. You'd have guys will have to check me on that one. But let's, it was somewhere in the 1960s that they got the TSH, I think. And it might have been later or earlier. I'm not sure. But remember, you didn't have thyroid tests before then. The older books are all about physical diagnosis signs of hypothyroidism. And if you wait until somebody has physical diagnosis signs, you have waited probably decades past when they had it. Okay. Right. And so, so we don't want to wait until you actually have any of those old signs and delayed tendon reflexes and all the other things that you might read about. If you're waiting until you have those signs, you've waited way, way, way too late. Okay. So, um, but the TSH was the first thing that came out. So, and there was a time when I started off, there was a TSH and the, and this is in the 1980s and the free thyroxine index. Okay. So there was not any free hormones at that time. Yes. It's back in the olden days. Yeah. Um, and so it was before the internet. I mean, really, you know, yeah. so, and I just had a black and white TV and, you know, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, the, we had color TV. I'm just kidding. But anyways, um, so, but it's kind of like that in terms yeah. of, and, and this is what I want to get across to people. I used 486 computers back then and we, the Pentium was just a, a, a dream of whomever's. Um, and so, uh, so if you think about that, your current doctor is using like a TSH only, which is a tool from at least 40 years ago, at least. All right. And so isn't that interesting that your doctor is using such an antiquated tool to be your only diagnostic sign of thyroid? Um, and I do know doctors today who still just measured the TSH only. Okay. Oh, um, and time. that's, and that's like, wow, that's like going back and using a 486 computer and seeing how much you love it again, you know? And so, yeah. uh, so, so why are we using these antiquated tools? And it's tradition. Um, oh. <laughs> in Canada, they are now, the new regulations are, the do a doctor cannot test past TSH unless the TSH actually has been elevated. So wow. they, you can't even test past it. See? I was lucky I got TSH and T4 tested. My doctor yeah. put on the form, this is a couple of years back when I was suspect of it. She put T4, T3, TSH. They mm -hmm. tested my TSH and T4 only, even though she right. had marked all of them and put back, there's no problems with TSH or T4, so we will not test T3. And mm -hmm. there is no lab in all of Canada that tests reverse T3. So a doctor cannot even order it for you, have to get Moses. it through a naturopath See, and yeah. send it to California where you are. Damn, because California rules. Anyways, <laughs> the... <laughs> That's just a little sideline there. Um, the, uh, well, see, that's, I think, everybody in our country's fear of what national, nationalized healthcare would be is you'd have these, that same dogma would apply to if there was a Medicare for all, which at some level I'm obviously dramatically want for our country because there shouldn't be any medical bankruptcies and all these other things. But I don't want any dictum that you cannot order a, a reverse T3 because that's sad. Even that's, if they did, they wouldn't know what to do with it. Unfortunately, true, but that's, right? you but, know, that's, that's many levels of screwed up there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, many levels, levels of screwed up. up. Yes. Yeah, I would have yeah. to agree on that. Yeah. yeah. And so, <laughs> I, I, see, I avoided my more colorful term. And so, um, the, <laughs> so that's the problem is that, well, see, 
you have to wonder when you when you're going through medical schools you know the the main thing was are you going to be a surgeon or are you going to be an internist surgeons have operating theaters they're fun people on average okay um it's more fun to go into surgery so why do you go into internal medicine because you like figuring things out okay that's kind of always been my thing i like figuring that mm -hmm. out. i like figuring that out that's why you really become an internist is to figure things out and in today's world the way to figure things out with all the fun tests out there is you order everything especially when you grow up in a university-based system and the cost containments it was just before hmo medicine yes i'm dating myself again um, <laughs> um and and that took over everything in our country anyways and so uh that you know we're trying to do cost containment and somehow the uh if you do something where you order more tests somehow that's a bad thing and it's not true the studies are very clear anything a doctor does to treat their patient that keeps them out of a hospital has been proven to save money for the system in general. And that's what we have to do. And so, so, so anybody who tries to limit the kind of testing a doctor does is actually working against science as well. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. So yeah. when, so obviously yeah. we're seeing it a lot and I agree with you, I would say at least 80% of my clients have, if they get treated properly and they've been tested, have mm -hmm. hypothyroidism to some, mm -hmm. you know, some right. Hashimoto, some just right. under normal TSH with low T3. I see that a ton where, yes. you know, so it's very clear that this is happening. So I know that you test most of your clients for, for mm -hmm. a thyroid panel when they come in. Right. How often are you seeing a woman that is overweight? Like what percentage of women that are overweight have hypothyroidism? Well, practice. you know, it's when we use the term metabolic hypothyroidism, which yeah. you have this normal TSH and this kind of skewy, skewy, that's not a real word. Um, was, let's let's use it. Um, <laughs> skewy. Well, skewy kind of works because you know where I'm going with it. <laughs> yeah. and it's skewed, so it kind of actually yeah. does work. Um, <laughs> We're going to be making um, up our own lingo here. Wh why not? Me, it, me and Mr. Smarty Pants. <laughs> see, if it, if it actually communicates something, then it must be a word. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> so the, the, the free T3 to reverse T3 ratio, you, you see that in nearly everybody because there's two common reasons that I think everybody knows for a high reverse T3. That's stress, which a lot of people have, and dieting itself because a lot of our patients are overweight, continue to do diets, yes. right? You know, yeah. and as we know, dieting, chronic dieting is a form of stress it's in and of itself. There's a lot of stress in this world, as we were talking about before. And so is, you know, that alone is enough to do it. And then you throw in all the um, xenoestrogens of the world, which most have a, a negative effect on thyroid function. You did what recently on heavy metals, heavy metal exposure. Have, there's so many reasons out there for this skewy ratio um, <laughs> that, uh, that are beyond just measuring thyroid antibodies, which everybody should have measured as well. Sorry if you can. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and because you, you can predict, because there's the, the Hashimoto's type symptoms that are related just to autoimmunity. And I know you know this, but you know, the, the, yeah, just okay. the autoimmunity. And then there's the, the hypothyroid symptoms. And you sometimes have both. And one can be like your like thyroid functions can be improved, but you still have out of control autoimmunity. And your issue right now is more autoimmunity than it is hypothyroidism. And if you didn't test for it, then you don't know, you know. And so, yeah. so is your uh, treatment protocols quite different for women that have Hashimoto's compared to just have like the you know low T3 um, without antibiotics? Yes. Yeah, correct. Yes, yeah. it is. I mean, you, it's all individualized medicine because that's the mm -hmm. difficult thing that we're talking about is mm -hmm. remember how easy the Western approach was? You measure mm -hmm. a TSH. The TSH is abnormal. Synthroid. You give T4, you, uh, you give Synthroid. The TSH comes down. You're done. See? Yeah. And now, yeah. <laughs> now, now you have your MD and thyroid right there. And there's, and there's nothing else. If, if, you, if you really look at it, there is nothing else to know. And so, uh, and they're all the science. I mean, if you go to PubMed, gov that's the nih website and you just look up reverse t3 you look up these things and you go wow science is like all over this stuff why isn't my regular doctor especially in the internet era right you know when i have to used to do research at the beginning of my career dating myself yet again there was indexus medica so you had to go to the medical library look something up find a journal it is <laughs> torture now everybody can do better research than i did in medical school and so um and so but they go to Google for it, which is not, it's a yeah. piece of the puzzle, mind you. Piece of the there's puzzle. some good things yes. there, you know, 
but it's it, it's really PubMed that you can get the most information, at, like even on the Lotus Now Truck Zones and whatever else. There's good stuff out there, and then there's a lot of crap on the Google world. And so, uh, yeah. but it's there for everybody. So why is our doctors not using it? And there's cost containment things that obviously you know, like uh, the the Canadian doctors must be under. Um, and so. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and then that's, again, another, to me, would be another argument against the national healthcare system. Uh, on average, I'm for, uh, not that that's a big issue, but, uh, but that kind of stuff always bothers me is that, you know, would the powers that be regulate, this is exactly, this is the only thyroid testing you can get. Uh, when, I, when you, where this started, when you go into internal medicine, Instead of the, in the 1960s, where it was all about uh, physical exam signs and things, everything is about the laboratory for us, uh, us right now, because you want to find things at this preclinical phase before the TSH goes up, okay? Right. And that's where we need to find it. So if you're just missing TSHs and T4s, et cetera, you're missing everything. And honestly, even in my area, it's still, and if the doctor does these things, they are considered kind of a quack. I've been called a quack umpteen times i mean you know and so uh you know what can you do about it you just let people have their little quacky thing and you move on you know and so yeah. uh but uh because it's you should be fascinated enough so you know when you you talk about this yes that's when i started off from my residency primarily go to medical school your residency does most of the further indoctrination about how you prescribe things okay and so um and then you just say yes this is the way we do things and then when you start listening to your patients and they their tsh corrects and they don't feel better it's like well gosh is there something i'm missing here and then you do research and you go wow there's a lot of other tests out there why don't i measure them and then even before because the practice of medicine for a reason i mean uh, I've only known how to use reverse T3 for, I don't know, 10 or 15, I'm, uh, you know, uh, years. I mean, I didn't know how to use it 20 years ago. No, I don't I, think many it, people did. Yeah. And so, and, and it's still considered, that's the, considered the hokiest of all, right? You know? And yeah. So, uh, but, uh, but it's just, and it's just a tool. You don't try to make everything about any one test. That would be another concern. It's like nothing yeah. else matters, but reverse T3. Well, that's not true either. Okay. And no. So, um, and so. But anyway, so, so actually order more tests, get, encourage, you know, hopefully your doctors will just have that sense of state so of inquiry. And, yeah. And what, if, besides the thyroid panel, because I think right. most of the people listening right now, they, they've got that much that, okay, we right. should have this full thyroid panel done with the antibodies. Right. The reverse T3 needs to be included. Right. Get it done. However you have to go on the black market, order your tests, whatever it is you got to do. <laughs> However you have to do it, yeah. <laughs> what other tests do you get? Like once that comes back as positive, so the woman's got hypothyroidism or man, or they've mm -hmm. got Hashimoto's. Um, at what, and then what are you testing on top? What is your gold standard as far as, okay, you've got this. Now I'm going to test these things. Like, do you have well, certain markers? Man, I mean, you know. Uh, I'm kind of the, you measure everything, you know, the most important yeah. things in life are the things you can't measure, measure everything you can. So I tell people, you know, love so much more important than vitamin D, but you know what? I can have a vitamin D test. I don't have a love test. So I'm going to leave love to you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> more more important, but I can correct vitamin D. Okay. I mean, taking enough vitamin D is not a belief system. <laughs> It's, there's a level we shoot for and however much you need to take along with your K2 is how much vitamin D. And obviously vitamin D is very important in immune system health, by the way. But, and it goes way beyond that. And as you also know, kind of back to this where you try to keep emphasizing to people, nutrition treats people, not diseases, right? Um, and so exercise is different for different body types. It goes way beyond thyroid. And of course, you know, so as you well know, whenever you're doing thyroid testing, you have to do adrenal testing, depending on the state of, you know, in menopause, every woman's hormones are down. So how, how often you measure that is up to the practitioner. But during uh, you know, premenstrual health, and if especially if there's anything else going on, then doing luteal phase hormones, pancreatic function is important. The entire importance of measuring, asking the person, how is their digestive health? And most of those people, their window into hypothyroidism is their digestion, right? So you have to say, well, gosh, are these the leaky gut slash SIBO people slash IBS people, I'm sorry for all the slashes, but, um, and then the main thing you need to do is work on their digestive health and that'll do more for their thyroid functions and dealing with their thyroid functions, right? right. And right. so, so you, it comes down to your, your interview, excuse me, your um, meeting with the patient. And so, and once you get a better feel for them, you pretty much get the idea this is a, this person's pathway into autoimmunity or just low thyroid itself. 
is more stress, is more gastrointestinal, is, gosh, there's some exposures, I need to test for heavy metals or some other things, you know, and you try to figure out, because otherwise you do shotgun so many tests, and since some of these things aren't covered by their insurances, you know, the, I just gave them more stress because I just gave them a few thousand dollars worth of tests, and they're like, you know, poosh, thyroid function deteriorates. Um, <laughs> Sorry about that yeah. for everybody, but it kind of goes like that. So you also it have to does. ask I'm, yeah. after decades, I still forget to ask them, some people if they have insurance. And obviously in America, that's important still. Um, and so do you have insurance? Because that's a big question when you, know, when you start ordering tests, you know, because everything I'm talking about, the endocrine panels. The, this other part of chronic stress is measuring the, the MTHFR genes and looking at homocysteine, looking at all the different inflammation levels in the, in the person's body, looking at their glycation, which is um, blood sugar stuff. All that stuff interplays because if you just get stuck that somehow somebody's an endocrine system independent of everything else, then once again, you've, you've fallen down the trap, okay? And mm -hmm. that they, every, everybody seems to, to, to do, with, especially with nutrition, you know, I, you know, the, the, everybody knows I'm a paleo slash primal doctor as much as anything, but it's a template to work from. And, yeah. and to say that no person in the world can ever eat rice again is just not true. It's just not a starting place for most people. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so when you go through this and you have to get, because so many people, the locus of control for their health has been taken away from them already. And then when you tell them how to eat and how to exercise, you essentially have taken out every other thing as well too, which is not a good strategy. If you tell them, this is how you eat, this is, so you have to work with a person a lot that way because you really want them really empowered to make their, their choices. You're trying to uncover hurdles for them, these tests that we do and say, listen, wow, you really have a lot of inflammation and you have a very low in the fish oils and we need to help you with the regulation of inflammation and that will help your stress and help my thyroid. Yes, it will. And my adrenals and whatever. And so make sure we're treating people. Okay. So not yeah. thyroid, not thyroid disease. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, and of course there's a specific part of the thyroid disease. Remember in terms of which thyroid hormones we use and the other things, I'm not saying different, but you know, uh, I see a lot of pretty savvy people, especially since the, you know, paleo thyroid solution and L, um, that, that have been through, they've gotten the tests and some other things and they're still missing other pieces that often sometimes they don't wanna deal with themselves, stress, okay? Yeah. Um, and sometimes things that haven't been tested, you're very questioned, okay? Because mm -hmm. I'm not avoiding it, I'm just being tangential. Um, the, <laughs> sorry. I appreciate um, it. <laughs> uh, but that's the whole idea is that, you know, everybody, not just your doctor needs to look at yourself comprehensively, you know? And so there's so many levels of dysfunction that I think are behind all this hypothyroidism that goes beyond xenoestrogens in the environment. Um, and so, uh, but th those are the things that often, you know, there's no great xenoestrogen test as far as I'm concerned. There's a few of them out there, but, um, but the, you just have to minimize those kinds of burdens because- yes. Those are the things that are causing the residual thyroid dysfunction or the low morning temperatures or the fatigues, et cetera, that are still at this point somewhat un and, you know, unmeasurable. Okay. And so and why are all these things have such a stronger impact on the females than the male? Because it's quite a large difference between a women with hypothyroidism compared to men. The, um, wow. I mean, that's a complicated question. It and is. so yeah. uh, is it just, I've heard that it's just because we have it's our hormones. It's just simply that we have more estrogen in our body and more progesterone. And that's way too simplistic. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, no, it's, um, it's, it's, it is much more complicated. The best way I try to get is uh, everybody who's heard me talk. I mean, women, you know, we all know women are the more misunderstood than men are. Okay. And, and that has to do with your hormonal complexity. So yes, the women have a hormonal complexity that provides enormous strengths to you guys uh, that guys don't have yes with any level of complexity that is new in a, an evolved state the past being just testosterone driven um it comes new ways that things can screw up okay so so balancing something as delicate as that balance is very difficult the the hormonal estrogen balance because so once you really start to to because that's a system that gets thrown off a lot by stress and misogyny and all the other things in the world, sorry. Um, uh, it's very complicated. Um, it but, yeah. but, but when you get it in balance, once again, it imparts a level of functionality that is available for women that men don't have. Okay, so great, with greater strength, greater complexity, comes greater newer ways that things can screw up. 
That's like, you know, PMS, mm -hmm. guys don't understand it because we really can't get that one, okay? Yeah. And so we look at it as a weakness. Oh, PMS, I can't get PMS, I must be better than you. No, 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 you just don't have a menstrual cycle. <laughs> um, and so that's it, that's, that's where it ends. And so, so therefore it doesn't have a chance of getting messed up. So, and so when I talk about this, we all know that they're probably due to estrogen predominance, and it's more complicated than this, well, and xenoestrogens, okay? So, so when I say that, please, I know you've had some speakers. I didn't listen to all your videos. I'm oh. not, sorry, oh, I don't. Geez, I can't <laughs> sorry. <believe it. laughs> um, but, so what, and I know a lot has been said about this, but it's the, one of the great myths that's been sold to the American woman, uh, and probably the Canadian woman too, is, is basically that your estrogens are out to get you. Okay. Yeah. Your estrogens are your strength. Okay. Mm -hmm. Getting you to believe that your estrogens are out to get you is kind of like getting guys to get, getting you to wear high heels. <laughs> you know, how did we get you to believe these things? Um, and so it's, you know, so uh, w this is, a, it's a definitely part of the male misunderstanding of the female physiology that makes you feel your estrogens are against you. And, and just a brief aside, especially women who get breast cancer, oh my gosh, it's estrogen, it was fed by estrogens and all these other things because it has an estrogen receptor, which is what a breast tissue is supposed to have. It's yeah. when it doesn't have the estrogen receptor, you really should start worrying, okay? So the estrogen doesn't cause the cancer, okay? It's xenoestrogens and a gazillion cancer is its own subject, obviously. Um, so don't believe that it's your estrogen mm -hmm. out to get you. Um, it has to do with so many xenoestrogens in the environment and so many other factors. But, you know, when it comes right down to it, when you mess up a woman's cycle through all these chemical imbalances, you're going to affect probably the most delicate system first, which affects the immune system dramatically. And that increases the risk of any autoimmune disease. Not all of them, like 90 some percent of them. Um, and that does increase the chance of especially the Hashimoto's. And so, yeah. but don't, don't believe it's your estrogens, please ladies out there. <laughs> It's I not. know it's okay. it, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. I just wonder what's going to come out in the next ten years about yeah. all of this because I, I think, like energetically, like you you're a very yeah. spiritual guy, yeah. and I think yeah. energetically, what's happening because we all have the same gut mm -hmm. problems as far as men do. We've got the right. same. We got stress. We've got the same mm -hmm. lighting environment and EMF waves coming at all these things that men have as well. So let's just minus the estrogen stuff, right. we're still having all the same influence. We all have heavy metal toxicity, you know, mm -hmm. mox, uh, myotoxin, right. And right. Parasite, whatever. They've got right. the same, but yeah, we're seeing this massive, you right. know, Increase and it has to hypothyroidism. It has to do with the the that goes psychoneuroendocrine immunology, right? That's the uh, the field of study, which basically is the, the Western way of saying the web that has no weaver. But um, but stress affects psycho neuro in, the neurological system, neuroendocrine immunology. The neurologic endocrine and immune systems are so interrelated. Separating them out, especially going, I'm going to go to my neurologist, my endocrinologist, and my immunologist, like that makes any sense at all. Um, and because you now have disintegrated yourself, and we're talking about integrative medicine, and here you just disintegrated yourself into a bunch of different body parts, and, and you have 14 specialists, some people do, by the way, but even if they have four, okay, then you have almost lost the game right there, okay? <laughs> um, and I, st I have my patients who go to some online adrenal specialist who says, I'm the adrenal guru, because adrenal dysfunction is tough for all of us to treat. It, just, it, it does sideline into thyroid, it really does. And so, so when you say that, they, they're always searching, but you know, when they have answers in front of them, they don't want some of the, the answers you can give them. So every doctor is faced with an online adrenal specialist or online thyroid specialist or whatever. I'll have patients locally who see an endocrinologist in Santa Barbara, and, which isn't too far from me, um, and they're an the endocrinologist. They have more agency authority than I do in their mind because they're endocrinologists, right? And so we're all facing that uh, and this, this idea that people – they, they don't tr learn to trust themselves. That's it. Mm -hmm. Keeps coming back to, and I do think when when women regain this, that re retake hold of this healing agency, which you have um, probably more so than even men in terms of this ability, this 
which tunes into the intuitive body and what intuitive healing really is um, to make the right choices and to know what to do and that you will learn to listen to yourself and impart that in ways that your doctors can listen to you. And that will, that'll accelerate this healing so much. And so, mm, and agree. most people will heal their hypothyroidism. I sincerely believe that. Okay. Meaning they'll get to a place where they don't need any thyroid hormone and anything else. Uh, it'll be a long time before we get there, but that is true for all of us as you end the autoimmunity you, you know, you rebalance your entire body. You're probably on thyroid for some while to kind of have the energy to get there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then, exactly. then eventually, again, there are people, of course, you know, that will st stay on thyroid the rest of their life, but they'll at least be balanced while they're on the thyroid. Yeah, I, I remember hoping in the beginning that I was just going to be able to slap on the earth, earth, uh, here in Canada, but the desiccated thyroid and everything was going to be okay. And it's like, right. oh, this is so much more challenging than I thought it was going to be. It's a, and I, and I was saying this with another person that I was interviewing. It's just super delicate. Like the thyroid mm -hmm. is so delicate. There's so many different um, areas to it and what can be impacting it. And it can sound overwhelming. Somebody that's listening to us right now might be going, Oh my gosh, this is too much. Like, where am I supposed to even begin? And my thing was, was I just started to knock the things down. Just like Dr. Forsman was just saying, it's like, okay, if you've got gut problems, then you should probably look there first, get tested for SIBO, get tested for parasites, candida, and just start going through them. And that's what I've done. And it's taken me a right. while because I couldn't afford to go fork out thousands of dollars in one shot. And right. so it's just like, next is heavy metals, you know, like mm -hmm. I'm just like ticking the boxes off and trying to figure it all out. And that's what you have to do. Unfortunately. Right. And that's, you know, because there's clinics down here where you'll go see a specialist in functional medicine, and the person always leaves with bioidentical hormones and adrenal um, routine yes. and the thyroid hormones, and they do them all at the same time and they shotgun them, and that is so not right. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, but it isn't because. Most of the people go there, they're so out of whack that you do all those things. You'll probably get some benefits because something will work, but you'll get a lot of negatives too that will eventually outweigh the benefits. And so you just stepwise approach that you're talking about because the body wants to heal. There's some mm -hmm. people, they just the biggest thing from this, the changing the diet and dealing with the gut and so many benefits occur after that, that they feel so much better then they can see their thyroid better and then they manage the thyroid a little bit. And of course the adrenal is its own thing and you can go on and on from there, but you know, trust your body's ability to heal. It's such a powerful thing to know, if not believe, no. And so that your body will, you give it a, a fair shot. It will heal itself the vast majority of times. And so yeah. and, and the, our and, bodies are smart. We're, we became hypothyroid for a reason. We began attacking our own thyroid for a reason. Like our, our right. bodies are smart. It's doing this for a reason. And it's about right. finding out why that is, right? Instead right. of band-aiding it. Right. Our symptoms are our teachers, right? You know, yeah. and so too many people are suppressing the symptom. So even if they think they're taking the thyroid and they're not correcting the autoimmunity, the other things, and if they feel better for a while, it's almost dangerous because you take your eye off the wall. Well, all I really needed was desiccated thyroid. I got, I'm trying to tell you, you needed more than that because you have all these other imbalances going on. Something new will come up, right? Yeah. You know, so when a woman goes to the gynecologist and they take her uterus out, then her, yes, her, mens her cramping will go away, but she's not dealing with the underlying problems and something else will show up. You know, yes. I'm not recommending hysterectomies for everybody. I'm sure you no. understand that. I'm mean, yeah. just saying if you just take out the symptom uh, based organ and or, you know, thyroid test, you, you do feel better for a while, but man, healing is deeper most of the time, you know? Yeah. So. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I always say that to women because they're like, I think I'm going to get an ablation because I'm bleeding constantly. And I'm like, right. mm, wouldn't you rather kind of figure out why you're right. bleeding nonstop first? Cause you're not fixing the problem right. by, by oh, burning I, it I, off. And I had that conversation with a lady a couple of weeks ago where, you know, we used to do the total hysterectomy. We took the, the uterus and the ovaries out for almost everything who really needs those and now we at least then we move from that to just taking the uterus out you know and then and then we're down to the just like you know blasting the endometrium and so um so at least western medicine is kind of moving in the right direction uh, so you know they're so taking less of us out yeah see exactly less and less of you at a time you know um and because that's the idea, because Western doctors and, and the women doctors who bought into Western medicine, remember, this is not just a male thing, it's that we've, we've also indoctrinated some women into this as well, where you just don't need ovaries when you're, you know, when you're in menopause. Not true, by the way. Um, you don't want, you don't, who really needs the uterus? The answer is you. Actually, it's a good thing to keep if you at all can. And so, you know, you know have, keep the body parts as much as you possibly can.
course there's times, especially with cancer, other things that you have to do things. I get that. Yes. Um, and so that's where Western medicine is the, that step care approach, right? You start with lifestyle medicine first. Then if lifestyle medicine alone isn't enough, lifestyle and certain supplementations, okay? And if lifestyle, certain supplementations, some intermittent use of medicines. And if that's not enough, you can always do surgery in the future. Don't start with surgery or start with more potent drugs. Uh, it's yeah. just very unwise. The basic premise of, you know, it's all medicines are poisons, not the hormones, but all medicines per se. And can you poison yourself to long-term health? It's a great question for everybody to ask themselves. Yeah. And the current medical model is poisoning you to long, long-term health, which I don't think makes much sense to people. No. So speaking of just treatments though, <laughs> Yes, that's all right. I, I, and there is a role for treatment. I, you know, so there is. We're, and we're going to talk to about that. Yeah. Deeper as they treat symptoms. So remember, nobody's. Mm -hmm. If somebody has, when I um, I have had my migraines, and when I did this first Imitrex injection, it was literally like the hand of God reached in and took the the thing away, and I went. I can see why people like drugs because <laughs> it so was, she was a migraine. Oh magical. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so, and I know not everybody gets that, but the first time I did an Imidrex injection, it was like, Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little angels and everything. I mean, I was like, wow, I get why people like drugs. Um, so treat it. Of course there was a reason I had the migraine, but for love of all that's good in the world, you should treat it. And so fortunately over the years, like I've gotten to the point where I only get migraines when I deserve them. <laughs> um, and that's a good lesson. And I know it sounds weird. Anybody out there suffering from migraines, I get this, but in the end, that migraine is your teacher. Okay. And yeah. so, and you have to get to that place and yes, treat it when you have it and back down and de-stress and all these other things, learn your triggers, all those things. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's just sensitive individuals with different, will, you know, will take in this type, this world of, that's not good for hypersensitive people <laughs> um, no. and it'll work on you in a certain way. So that's, yes. so yes, of course use yes. treatments too. Sorry. Yeah. So. And I, I, I am, I had migraines for 10 years, almost straight. And, and it, it was partially due to my thyroid. So once I got right. thyroid medication, it was like that. It was like, oh my gosh, right. it, See, I got relief. Exactly. Right. You know, not a hundred percent, but you know, when right. you have migraine, chronic migraines, any percent is better. And then, like you said, then I could de I could have the energy to deal with what else was going on in my body. Exactly. Exactly. And so, uh, yeah. And so I want to mm -hmm. ask you about one of the things that I've seen on your Instagram TV channel, which mm -hmm. was about uh, low dose naltrexone, which is really mm -hmm. kind of an up and coming therapy to use with functional medicine practitioners, not with MDs, but when it comes to um, Hashimoto's, cancer, mm -hmm. uh, other autoimmune conditions. So for those that don't know anything about it, I, what is low dose naltrexone? You know, that's the most Canadian you sound when you do the oh. logos thing. That's, I, I, I was like, what is that? Oh, that's the Canadian coming through. Sorry for all your Canadian <laughs> listeners. But that's actually no dudes. You know, it sounds like a, something from one of those movies. Anyway. <laughs> I, like Fargo. I, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. That's the most. Yeah. Anyways. Um, low dose naltrexone. So everybody, low dose naltrexone. There's a website dedicated to it. Low dose naltrexone.org. PubMed has a great um, if you go to PubMed and just low dose naltrexone, cancer, thyroid, whatever, autoimmunity, whatever you're doing, that's a great place. There's the LDN book these days, okay, which is a very good resource as well. So like anything else, you don't want to make it seem like a panacea, okay? But low dose naltrexone is truly a low dose of this medicine known as naltrexone, which has a couple of different activities. Um, aspects to it. The things most of us grew up with, so to speak, was as working as a brief and opiate suppressor, which is really what the drug does. But when if you it has such a short half life that it has a rebound increase in endorphins. And so most people think, well, endorphins are good for you. And if you can do something, even though it's a medicine, to boost your endorphins, then you can get a lot of benefits related to the endorphin system. So of course, as you can imagine, it's been used in fibromyalgia to help with chronic pain. It's been using chronic infections and in cancer to help with immune system function. Opiates, um, your endogenous opiates, endorphins, okay? As you, most people know, endogenous morphine is how the, your endogenous system got named after the drug morphine. So endorphins, okay, really are powerful molecules that can help your immune system function um, and can help with your body's regulation of pain. As well, there's a component to the low-dose naltrexone that has a pain relief property as well. Um, and so an anti-inflammatory 
excuse me. Um, so obviously the opioid part is part of that too. Um, and so how exactly in this low dose naltrexone works? It, it works differently for different people, more of it as an anti-inflammatory in some, more of an um, endorphin booster in others. Uh, but unequivocally, it can help the body with the regulation and treatment of any form uh, of um, autoimmune disease. And so, and that's where most of us, I learned it more about in the cancer world. That's the first time I ever heard of it. And I use it in treating my as one of the treatments for people with cancer in terms of dealing with programmed cell death, which is another thing it does, helping old cells that are supposed to leave your body, leave and helping the new ones come in. Uh, so, uh, you know, and you know, I often don't lead with it when it comes to, to Hashi's. I think, you know, the basic protocol, Elle's book does a great job of this thyroid solution, Al Russ's book. I, I did a little published interview at the end. And so as, as you start off with a paleo slash primal diet, you correct vitamin D, you take certain forms of selenium. And for many people, that will be enough to trigger a healing response. Not that I'm afraid of naltrexone at all, um, but low dose naltrexone can be used early on. It can be used later if you don't see the right kind of drop in the thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. So it can be used to help downregulate your body's production of those antibodies, which can be profoundly beneficial. Yeah, absolutely. Wasn't it originally, it, like in high dose naltrexone, wasn't it originally right. used for uh, people right. coming off heroin? Right. And yeah. so that's why a lot of doctors don't understand it. So I have to to counsel my patients, do not tell, if you're going to get a colonoscopy, don't tell them you take naltrexone. They <laughs> think you're a druggie. No, really, I have to, because they do the Western doctor thinks of naltrexone entirely in terms of being an anti-narcotic and being a way of figuring out if somebody is overdosed in front of you, you give an injection of something like it, um, and the person comes out, then you know it's an, an opiate overdose. So they think of it in terms of opiate overdosing, and, and the nice thing about low-dose naltrexone is it can be used in depression and obsessive compulsive disease, and it can have some neuropsych Psychiatric benefits that are very profound, but the low dose of it is the key. In our country, if you try to go to a standard pharmacy, all they have is regular dose or high dose naltrexone, um, and so you have to get it through compounding pharmacies. And so okay. that's the thing, and you have to have a doctor who's willing enough to to use low dose naltrexone. Um, they prescribe it through compounding pharmacies who can send it to you. You know, throughout our country, I use different, um, I very rarely even use some of the local pharmacies uh, just because they're a little bit pricier than the, the, some of the other ones. And so, uh, but it's a profoundly beneficial tool. It can usually dose at night. It's only side effect tends to be the sleep disorder things. People are very sensitive, should start at lower doses. So lower dose, like one, you know, I've started as low as one milligram in some people. I'm, you know, I know people who started at 0.5, et cetera. It, you get up to four and a half milligrams. Standard dose naltrexone that nobody actually really uses is 50 milligrams. Um, the highest I've used it is nine milligrams. I've used it twice a day. I've used it once a day. And the idea that it can only be dosed at night is not true either. Some people who get the sleep disturbance only can take it during the day. So it's a very worthwhile tool. Um, most places you can get it somewhere around a buck a pill, uh, uh, for the, which in the world of treatments is not that bad. And so mm -hmm. uh, it's a very, it's safe. Um, do I think everybody in the world should be on low dose naltrexone? No, I don't take it that far. Does it work in everybody? Of course not. Nothing works in everybody. But mm -hmm. it's a great little tool to help people with uh, any of the overlap syndromes. So the overlap syndromes are chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia, um, irritable bowel insomnia, ir you know, interstitial cystitis, on onward to multiple chemical sensitivity. Um, so it can be used in any of the autoimmune diseases. It certainly can be used in cancer. So, and of course, in chronic infections, it's a very useful tool too. Um, but it's just like anything else. When the more complex the disease, the more ways that you can come after it, the the better you do as a doctor, and then it gives a greater chance for your body to heal itself. Yeah, absolutely. And so your 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 big thing is. Um like that you see the best results with as far as nutrition goes is a paleo based or primal based diet. Correct. And so, and you know, the, the, you know, and I've heard of most people, you know, that it's not third tablet material. You don't want to become as annoying as the vegans have been in the past. <laughs> it's just a good template to start with. Okay. Yes, um, and don't it make is. it into a belief system. It's a great template for human physiology. The, 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 the perfect human diet and all the things that people are writing about it. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with it. Okay. It's really true. But you know, in a world, um, especially where I see people who have, they've been to 
uh, the gastroenterologist sometimes, and then you have to do a FODMAP diet. And then they have their other doctor who's given the food sensitivities. And you have to do the food sensitivities, and then they have to do the this. And they're just like, please let me eat anything. Yeah, you know? I know. <laughs> like, I know. You know? So I, had, All the- I had someone phone the other day who had Crohn's, and she's like, do I need to do the elemental diet? I'm like, whoa, See? whoa down. You don't exactly. want to do the elemental diet first right. off. I'm like, let's just. Let's just try paleo because a lot of people can have a great relief and you don't have to be Uh, drinking your meals. And with all, you know, respect to the autoimmune protocol diets, et cetera, if you can start people with paleo, it works so often that you don't have to be as restrictive as going to that, which is always like to me, like using a drug, it's it's in your back pocket. It's like, well, we didn't get the results with paleo. Let's try this. Okay. That's yeah, you know, try or keto, immediate. of yeah. course, as well. Or keto, too, you know, keto yes. is a, another great tool. Um, it's not the basic um, diet that I start everybody with, um, no, just because it's trouble. It's trouble to get people to do paleo, you know. And then, heck, in today's world, I, I, it's just a brief aside. The lady came to me and she she said, "Well, I asked her what diet she's doing. She's go, I'm doing keto, and I'm looking right at her labs, and I'm going." This this lady is not doing keto and of course i ask her what do you think keto is and yeah. I'm like, oh i have a starch and then some protein and a little vegetables and i go you just described the anti-keto diet um and so you really should look into that before you say you're doing it um so you have some people who over research thing and she was not even on the scratching the surface of whatever she needed to know um sorry uh, but so people true, tell you they're doing I know, you know, I know you I know, know this okay oh, i know gosh. it's your life but but you know you know when they tell you you're doing keto it's like yeah could you tell me a little bit more oh no i know what i'm doing <laughs> oh yeah yeah you know it's like when i tell them to give them a supplement routine and and they say what what i say what are you taking and they go what well, exactly what you told me and, and as soon as they say that you know they're not even they're close, not, you know? yeah a hundred percent certainty whenever they say that you know so anyways uh for everybody out there Yes, I mean, humans are meant to be, you know, we're omnivores and how carnivorous you are and or hand out how vegetarian to vegan you are is your decision based upon how you feel, not whether you believe in it or not. Now, if people don't feel comfortable eating animals, they shouldn't. If you felt like, oh my gosh, I can't do that, that belief system is not going to work for you. Okay, so so I, of course, have nothing against veganism or vegetarian. Why would I, as far as that goes? The problem is, is you don't eat belief systems. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, belief systems are in the intangible world. And so you just like, this is what humans do. And you can you get everything you need through, you know, through these nuts and these seeds and these vegetables and these fruits. And yes, whatever protein sources you, you like, and fats are good for you, as we all know. Um, but no, not everybody knows that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no. and so fats are good, you know, so anyway, yeah, so yes, I start with paleo. With and paleo the, yeah. the most important, if you want to treat somebody with thyroid, you've got to have them change their diet. I, I honestly don't. 100%. I can't, I can't yeah. think of one person who got better, who didn't make a dietary change. Maybe I, not even all the way. I agree. Okay, so, and a lot of people um, say, well, why am I not losing weight? I'm on the medication and blah, blah. It's right. like, have you changed yeah. your diet? Well, you know, I went you know, and you will hear that with, well, well, I've heard of low dose naltrexone. Do I really have to change my diet? Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> I hear you can take Lipitor and not have to worry about whatever you eat. I hear, why not low dose naltrexone? Um, by the way, I was joking about Lipitor. You're not supposed to do that. Um, and, but that's the way people think. I don't want to change my diet. So can I take a drug instead? That's when you're lost. Same thing goes with the supplement people. They're coming with suitcases of supplements and they're not willing to make the changes they need. And so oh, I know. Su- supplements I like going to the, the naturopath's office and they've, mm-hmm. they're lined up to get their IVs with all these vitamin C and vitamin B. Right. And they're riddled mm-hmm. with Lyme's disease and other chronic conditions. And mm-hmm. none of the doctors there are doing anything about the diet. And I'm like, right. Isn't that funny? Some of the, the naturopaths even you seem well they seem even worse about the diets and worse about the other things it's really interesting as some of the naturopaths and 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 the areas that i know yeah. uh you know seem to be the least naturopathic you know a, because and, they say it's the hardest thing to get people to change the people is. want the pill they just want the supplements they want to spend the money on the ivs but to change your diet it's too much especially in a western doctor's office because they used to the model of taking drugs right you know yeah. so and I often told people that, you know, supplements were kind of my, my gateway drug to nutrition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it is. If you could get them to make that little shift or taking some supplements, then yeah, might get them to do what they really need to, you know. And so, and it's better to take supplements than the poisons for the most part, you know. And so, but as uh, everybody who's listened to me, I, I, supplements are a line of intelligence, okay. Yeah. And they need to be worked on. But 
saying it's more important than love or music or beauty or, you know, a gazillion other lines of intelligence. That's kind of silly. But mm -hmm. to have this, you know, kind of informed awareness about all these things and play with it, you know, yeah. um, you know, diet, you know, once, once you get people, it's the emotional things, you know, and I, I had a lady who had some great success because, you know, at one point she said, life isn't worth living without bagels. And I said, well, that's, that's a fairly sad statement. However, um, you may want to change your perception on that. So, 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 so can we work on everything but bagels? Okay. So over years, she, she, you know, she gets to the point where she realized there was more life to bagels, which is really good, but that was, mm -hmm. had to be her own awareness. But we, we let her, when I said let her, she wasn't going to give up bagels. So, <laughs> so you keep eating bagels, but can we get rid of the other breads and other things? And she made some huge, this was in diabetes and weight and some other things. So, you know, you got to meet people where they're at, you know, yeah. if they believe life isn't worth living without bagels, man, you do not take bagels away from them. Okay. Um, but let's just talk about Hashimoto's specifically mm -hmm. and gluten yes. and grains because right. I try to explain this to people and it's it's one of those tough ones where the thyroid and gluten they mimic each other and how they load the pro the thyroid proteins mimic each other and people mm -hmm. don't get that. So can right. you explain that <laughs> one from a science well, point of view? You know, it's a, it's a great you why know, we need I, to avoid gluten. At least yeah, avoid gluten. At least gluten. But you know, I, I saw a new patient um, last week sometime. Perfect case. He was seeing again some other doctor in Orange County because that was sorry, that's a, a Southern California county. Um, and so uh, but the, that person retired so they had to come see me and I was looking back at the old lab work and and where they were told they were gluten sensitive well they they actually had these things called tissue transglutaminase on antibodies which is diagnostic for celiac and I one of the ba basic things I told them is you are not gluten sensitive because in here in California everybody's saying gluten sensitive right so even if we went to a restaurant I know they're not taking them serious and so I said listen you have celiac. I mean, you haven't had a small bowel biopsy, but you don't need to. Everything about your history and this antibody tells me you have celiac disease. It goes way past your, and he has Hashimoto's too, by the way. I'm sorry, you know, when I, when I talk about that. And you don't often see, because there is gluten sensitivity, which of course does exist, by the way. But I'm just saying that he was full on celiac and he didn't get that. And what, however reason, even though the other doctor had done the test, didn't really lock that in is that you're not gluten sensitive, you're a celiac. And anybody with Hashimoto's and this has to be paleo, okay? Because you I, you know, he is, and that, and he has blood sugar issues and central weight issues. I mean, he's a walking textbook of paleo. Um, I mean, and I mean, really, and so, yeah. and, and, you know, and we talked about glutens and lectins and people missing, you know, so first of all, glutens and all the other things that make things sticky are the glutenoids. The glutenoids, it used to be even with gluten, as you know, it used to be barley, rye, oats, and wheat. The acronym was ROW. And then they said, no, it's a little bit different. This oat thing is okay. Oats aren't okay. Okay. I don't care if they're gluten-free or whatever else. Oats Maybe are almost not. never okay. And so, not okay. And, no, and, and, and so, you know, so you put, that's attacking people's belief system. There's people who think oatmeal is healthy, right? Because, you know, oh, Cheerios, It's the oatmeal, hardest thing for my the, clients to get rid of. And, they're like, I, they're so proud. I eat my bowl of oatmeal every morning. And I'm like, no, it's like, there's so, your problem. It's like, yeah, exactly. And I tell them, you know, like, why? It's the only reason you eat oatmeal is a syrup anyways, okay? What's up with that? You know, and so I don't understand oatmeal on any level, by the way, because I never quite got it. But some people are quite attached to their oatmeal. But it's still a gluten, or at least a very large gluten it's so similar to gluten that I wouldn't risk it, okay? And then when you go through the rest of the grains, and as most of the people out there know, all foods have lectins. The lectins found in the, the legumes can be, especially the starchy legumes, are the most gluten-like in terms of their function, in terms of what they do, sorry. Um, and so, so when you talk about that, you have the, glute, the grains and all the glutenoids, okay? And then, and then, you know, whether you're looking at the legumes, because that's another tough one for people, mm -hmm. especially the vegans, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is they are attached to it being great proteins, the, the legumes in general. And, you know, especially with paleo, what I personally did was like back in that, when I did this however long ago, is, you know, three weeks of nothing. And then I don't get to try my black beans again. And I tried black beans and, oh, black beans had a worse effect on me than gluten, okay? Now that's me personally not the world. Okay. But eventually I get to the point where, gosh, I can't eat black beans. However, I could eat snap peas. I could eat snow peas, et cetera, et cetera. So you find your own path here. I'm talking about how I'm personally feeling, mind you. Um, and so you take it past belief system. At some point with most of the people with a thyroid and the Hashimoto's, 
I have to do blood tests on them, proving that their antibodies are decreasing. Because they almost don't, don't want to give up whatever their grain oh, of choice is. Yeah, of course, okay? yeah. And so you do, but you do the blood test and you can show them that this is improving. Or, and same thing goes with the naltrexone, et cetera. You know, is if you try a new intervention and you say, hey, look at the improvements you're getting, whether it's in the thyroid function test or in the auto antibody levels. Um, so, you know, so yes, if you can get people to do paleo, which it, it's the key part of treating Hashimoto's. I mean, I, I agree. if I, for some reason, was only allowed one thing, it would be a paleo diet to treat yeah. Hashimoto's, sorry. I mean, yeah. and, and so, and of course, it's not the answer for absolutely everybody. I have people who have done paleo diets and no, it didn't seem to change their autoimmunity level, which means their, their trigger is something other than the, the gluten slash glutenoids, okay, which is true. This is the confusing thing for people is celiac disease is always caused by gluten, okay, the classic barley, rye, and wheat, okay, um, and has to be eliminated or the person that attacks themselves, which is so important for everybody to get. The only model of autoimmunity we understand, whether it's, you know, is all the autoimmunity, from rheumatoid to lupus to, to Crohn's that you brought up, we don't know what causes it, okay? We don't know for sure. Celiac, we know that if you, you it's caused by gluten, gluten, these glutenoids, especially the glutens, and you don't just attack them, you attack yourself because of it. But when you remove the, the trigger, when you remove the irritant, you stop attacking you even though you're there. So this thing that's been sold to people about autoimmunity, well, you'll never get over that one because you're always there kind of thing. No, if you figure out the trigger and remove it, okay, then the person is actually cured. And so mm-hmm. it, the trouble is it's not always the same thing in everybody. It, the only disease that's true is celiac. And this guy is going to have to you know, really do the, the gluten-free thing. Uh, if I can get him to do paleo, I, I hope that I can. Um, but And his very least, his celiac test will drop go away he'll still be celiac disease his antibodies will drop he'll he'll always be celiac um but but i'm hoping that his hashi's antibodies will drop as well and if they don't then it's going to be some other brain that he doesn't want to give up yeah exactly yeah (laughs) i always tell my clients don't think past 30 days like Mm -hmm. just give me 30 days on paleo don't look past it because one of two things is going to happen you're going to get to that end of 30 days and you're going to feel so much better Right. It won't be worth going back to that piece of that bagel or your bowl of oatmeal or whatever. Right. Or you're right. going to rather feel like crap and right. go ahead and eat the bagel. And, and as everybody knows, if you do the 30 days and you legitimately truly do it, yes, then you introduce that you will not that bagel you or will whatever. Feel really bad. You can. You know, because I had this beautiful lady once where she did a full paleo for 30 days, just like she goes. And then I reintroduced, you know, sourdough, and that was okay. And then I, drew, I can't remember because it was a little while ago. But then when I ran into reintroduced sugar, oh, my gosh, I felt horrible. But yeah. I was able to work right through it. Oh. <laughs> and I went, yeah, that's my girl. All right, so you've identified. She goes, I'll deal with the sugar thing in the future. At least I know it really is my biggest issue right now. And I went, good for you. I mean, that's a level of awareness. But yeah. my, favorite, my favorite part was I was able to work right through that, which, by the way, is a learning lesson for everybody. If you keep eating the irritant and not listening, eventually it doesn't cause the same signal, that signal to noise ratio, right? You know, yes. so if yeah. you, have, you create more Dose noise by eating it all the time, the signal to noise ratio goes away, not goes away, but decreases dramatically. That's yeah. what I really loved about this place. Like, and it, it, that's always a thing too for really bright people okay is so good at rationalizing stuff right oh, yeah. um and they have you know it's like you know i was able to work right through that with such a beautiful <laughs> statement you know um because you can you know if you yeah really want i know to. i've i've done it actually where i've had no yeah. sugar and then ke- went to eat my blizzard from dairy queen and i was like oh my god it's giving me an instant migraine and i feel so oh. sick but i'm just gonna power through it because power like, through like, exactly yeah, it's like i love that you know and so but at least Horrible. there's the, you know, it comes with awareness. It's like when we teach meditation, right? And you, people say, well, I can't do it because so many thoughts. I go, that's the first awareness is that yeah. there's have, having so many random thoughts. What a great awareness to have. Now, that's, that's the sign that we need to work on the stress side of things, right? Yeah. And so, so that takes us back to, you know, can, 
can you really get people to get the deepest healing without going to the spiritual levels? My experience is yeah, they have to, they have to deal with the stress because otherwise they go back to the, what was it? The blizzard or the, yeah. the, <laughs> the pizza or the whatever, you know? And so, because it's the triggers in the environment, right? Exactly. You know, that, that get yeah. them to, and we find you, you, people are be triggered and often by loved ones, right? Cause our yeah. loved ones know about buttons better than anybody. Um, and so, uh, so, you know, that's why the, you get this chance to heal and I think you guys know this about me, which is I want more physically healthy people so that we can have more wise people. And right. so, because as we get older and we get into our wise woman or prone phase of our life and wise man phase of our life, then our role is to provide, um, you know, infinite empathy and compassion and kindness for everybody. And that's a pathway that when you're healthy is easier to take. It's a different pathway, mind you. Um, and so, uh, and that's what we're looking for everybody because this uh, world of ours, we need infinite compassion, love, compassionate, loving people as we get older. And we don't see that. We don't see that among our older generations. And so, um, and so the idea of all the things you do from my perspective is to have people really go down that pathway of knowing thyself or uh, having a meditative practice. And because it's been more, it's more relevant than ever. People are on their phones and things like that. I get these notifications, uh, uh, yesterday about the Mueller report. Sorry, that's a thing going on down here. And so, um, it's like, okay, I've Gary, seen it, yeah. you know, that's breathe. Okay. It's like, all right, this is nothing surprising about this. Keep moving on. So yes, it's a, it's a ongoing spiritual practice, but you know, because we catch ourselves. And so it'd be so easy to get triggered into some other pattern just because you feel <laughs> angst over the world. What, what are these humans doing? Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, but, uh, but that's, you know, so in the end, if for all of our patients out there and all, all, all of us humans out there, <laughs> the idea is working on these physical bodies and things like that is because most of us are later getting into later in our life and our jobs aren't just to be, and you know, hotties and all this other stuff. It's just not. And so that's another pressure that's on women that it, because guys, we can have gray hair and do whatever. And it's not, the pressure is not on us. And so this focus away from just how we look. I'm sure, again, I, you know, when you talk about weight with people, it has so much to do with how they're reflecting their inner selves, right? Oh, yeah. And there's so much there. As, but you know, obviously, when you talk with weight with people, there's, especially for women, there's so many overlays, sexual there's and otherwise. So yeah. And you have to have a person being willing to dive into what that is, or they mm -hmm. probably never will get to the weight they want to be, right? No, um, they can just so, keep looking to the diet. That's what I always say is quit looking right. to your diet to be the answer is because yeah. just because you're turning back to those sugary foods, don't say, okay, well, that paleo diet didn't work. I better go to keto now or whatever right. it is. Like, that's that's no. just the movement now, isn't it? Right? Yeah, oh, it paleo. is. Paleo was so 10 years ago. People don't I even, people are like, what's paleo? That's yeah. what they say to me. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, keto no. came long before keto did. Now it's all well, keto, right? Right. Well, but keto, yeah. the way people talk about it, it's more fab like. Actually, you know, keto actually itself has been around for 100 years, right? Uh, yeah, and yeah. so the way it was actually used for the treatment of seizure disorders, yes. you know, my use of it for 20 some years in terms of helping our cancer patients, the way most do I think it translates into the general population very well? And the answer is for select individuals. And yes, so, I see. Um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, so, yeah. but, but if people want to venture into the keto, it's like, listen, you really need to look into it. And cause not something that spontaneously occurs. And no. so, and if you feel better, or that with you it, can go on one day and off the next day, you can't do oh, that. Gosh, no. I mean, not even close, obviously. No. Right. No. And so, and I've done keto myself, everybody. It's a, you know, it, it's, it's a fun thing to do for a while, but usually somebody visits or what, and wants to go out and, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm not going to try to do keto yeah. when I go out, <laughs> yeah. just, you know, and I know it can be done everybody, but I'm just saying, yes. you know, yeah, uh, it works for you know. some people, but no, and I think you're right about what you're saying. I, I see a lot of women that are, you know, 40 plus because we're going through a shift in our life right now. And this right. is where we start to see thyroid really come out and weight gain start. And, right. but it is much more than just what's happening physically, spiritually, there's a lot going on. And like Dr. Forsman so. just said, it's, it, it's, we're going, we're, we're past that area in our life where it's like, you know, all that matters is how good we look and the career right. and the, you know, getting married and having kids. Usually at this point we're done with that, you know, and it's right. like, looking after ourselves. And I think that that's something about the energetic part of what starts to happen with women at this age is we start to look at our bodies and our, and tune into our, our spirit and say, what do I want? 
Right. It is about that and about asking yourself those things. Right. Hey, what about me now? I've taken care of my kids, yes. my husband, my career. Now what? Now what do right. I do? So, you know, because in the stress world, you know, when you teach about stress reduction, for the first thing for women, because of your multitasking abilities, et cetera, you have this kind of, and the, the mythology of, uh, I can do everything and fry it, you know, bring home the money and fry up in the pan or whatever those things are. Yeah. Um, they have those mythologies that women try to live up to where guys were just happy if we're doing one thing, right? Yeah. And you guys, one thing is just not enough, right? So you keep juggling balls and doing more. The first step in stress for women is almost always stress unloading, not taking on yeah. so much. And when you take that thing, then, then honor yourself and healing yourself. So that's why, you know, for men, it's always trying to get them to, to, to come downwards. For women, it's getting them to stand upwards. And so yeah. think of themselves first. Whereas for guys on average, it's going to get them to think of somebody other than themselves. Mm-hmm. And that's yeah. entirely an enculturation, of course. It's not a truth of the no. XY or the XX or any of those things. And so, yeah. um, and so for that, that's the thing for the hope that I'm hoping when people come to your website and see the different videos and things, they, they feel empowered. I know that's a, obviously a word that gets maybe overused sometimes, but, but a very important one because they regain the locus control in their health and they realize that they're, what they really needed was something much deeper than just vitamin D. Everybody knows yes. I prescribe more yeah. vitamin D than most doctors. So please, uh, you know, I'm not saying not to do that. It's just something. Yeah. something deeper going on. And so, and then hopefully the more healthy you are, the better you take care of yourself. That's not often because what happens in my practice sometimes is a woman will get over, you know, something, you know, over a fibromyalgia or some really, you know, things we get. And then the first thing, well, gosh, I can do a, a graduate program. It's like, please don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. No. Now what then? What can I pile on? <laughs> what I else do can I time? It's terrible. Exactly, you know? Terrible. And it's like, oh, no, yeah. that's not no. what I was we, looking for. Cause, I always say that yeah. women, women value themselves on how much they do. Right. That, that's where they hold their value. And it's, and, and to try to take that away from them in a sense of why don't you take time for yourself and, right. and relax and de-stress and meditate. I always get the same answer. Well, I go to the gym and yes. I'm like, no, yeah. that is not, and, and that, can't I meditate not included, too, right? Not you know, included. I want to, I want to cross train. I want to meditate and do. They Pilates, can justify you know? that. You know, you know and it's, say, it's always, oh, yeah. always this yeah. thing. And so it's like honor yourself and that yeah. human being this, not just the human doing this. And unfortunately that world, which is so human doing, um, it is, it's imbalancing for all of us, but it's more imbalancing for the, the feminine stroke because you guys are more about the human being. And so, and if you don't honor that stroke of healing, then it's, it's worse for you guys than it is for, for guys. Yeah. And so, and so it's just something to really understand. And we're all learning about that, but man, there is a balance, everybody. And yeah. so, and yes, the idea of getting on the right treatments and doing the, 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 the paleo diets, along with correcting your vitamin D, along with taking your 200 micrograms of selenium twice a day, along with low-dose naltrexone, is to help balance your autoimmunity and help balance the, whatever thyroid hormone that you go on if you have Hashimoto's. Um, get those things corrected. Understand that you're a human being. Probably have some other imbalances too, because why? You're human. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and there's, you know, because gosh, if I don't, that's the other problem. Sometimes the, the, the people with thyroid is they want to blame everything on thyroid because so many nonspecific symptoms are there, right? And the real reason is because they're stressed and they really have, you know, impulse power adrenal function and their thyroid really has been taken care of about as well as you can, you know? And so, and they really have to look at the adrenal side, which is another, you know, complicated mm-hmm. issue. But, um, but yeah, just keep, Keep looking. And like what you were saying, even if you address one fully, sometimes when people are really taking good care of themselves, they, they correct that one thing and then the body just heals the adrenals okay, or yeah, something oh, else. You don't even have to know that that was a problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, and then you feel digestively better Then no, you don't have to get the food sensitivity test because you're yeah. digesting better now and you're feeling better now. And you probably did have some leaky gut slash, you know, SIBO slash whatever, but your body can heal these things. Okay. You know, and so trust it. Yeah. Trust it. Yeah, I agree. Well, that's a good place to leave it. Dr. Forsman. Okay. I'm sorry if you wanted to talk about the thyroid hormones, I, we went on too many tangents, but you know, talk- it was perfect. That's exactly oh. what we needed. It okay. Is. Okay. All right. Alternative therapy, which is mm-hmm. that's, it, it, we just encompassed all of it, which is there is no simple answer. And then the really important thing here, I think the message, the takeaway is you have to tune in and you have to 
get at this from many different angles. There is no one straight answer. There is no, here's your thyroid medication. I'll see you later. Right. And that's so important for everybody to get. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And so feel better, but just realize, you know, it's, we're all the, you know, the, uh, the, you know, like the layers of the onion, right? We, you know, yeah. we feel better for a while and then there's something else that'll bubble up and, and just remember the, the basic truth that our symptoms are our teachers. Don't just try to quash them, learn from them. And then you won't need to keep getting the lesson, you know? Great. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing this with us today. Well, sure. I hope it was helpful to somebody anyways.